Hey guys, welcome to Metten. So in this video, we are going to look at the obstetric part of the fetal skull. So when you look at the fetal skull, this is called as the anterior fontanelle. So the anterior fontanelle is formed by the occipital, uh, sorry, coronal suture, the frontal bone, and the two parietal bones. It is like this. So anterior fontanelle is formed by the coronal suture and the sagittal suture connecting it. So actually, what is a fontanelle? Fontanelle is nothing but as a wide gap in the suture line. And when does anterior fontanelle close? The anterior fontanelle closes uh, up to 18 months. So coming down, we can see from the anterior fontanelle all the way up to the glabella. This part is called as the bro part. And from the glabella up to the mental process. What we can see? This is called as the face. So basically, three types of presentations we can see in the uh, obstetrics. That is the vertex bro and face vertex is made from the anterior fontanelle all the way up to the posterior fontanelle posterior fontanelle is also called as a lambda so three types of presentations vertex bro and face now let's move on to learn about the fontanelles so the as i told you fontanelles are nothing but as the wide gap in the suture line so totally there are six fontanelles the anterior fontanelle posterior fontanelle and four lateral fontanelles the anterior fontanelle is also called as bregma while as the posterior fontanelle is called as the lambda and basically anterior and posterior fontanelle are, are the two important fontanelles while the four lateral fontanelles are not, are not that important and when does the posterior fontanelle close um, uh, I, uh, posterior fontanelle closes at birth or it may also take up as much as six weeks after the birth now let's move on to the important diameters of the fetal skull so we have two types of diameters we have the transverse diameters and then we have the anterior posterior diameters first we'll discuss about the transverse diameters of the fetal skull we have something called as the biparietal diameter biparietal diameter is the diameter between the two parietal eminences of the fetal skull we have the parietal eminences on the parietal bone and the diameter of the two parietal eminences of the, of the fetal skull is called as the biparietal diameter and this is a very important diameter and it measures up to 9.5 centimeters then second one we have it is called as the super subparietal diameter so just a little bit below the uh, parietal eminence and little bit up the parietal eminence on the other side so it's, it will come like this diagonally like this so if this is the biparietal diameter this will be the super subparietal diameter and this measures up to 8.5 centimeters then we have the bitemporal diameters so bitemporal diameter is nothing but as diameter from the coronal suture where does it end from there uh, from the either side of the coronal suture to this side of the coronal suture that diameter is called as the bitemporal diameter and that measures up to 8 centimeters then finally we have something called as the bimastoid diameter so we have the mastoid process on the fetal skull on either side this is the mastoid process and this is the mastoid process and diameter of between these two mastoid process what we have is the bimastoid diameter and this diameter measures up to 7.5 5 cm and what is important about the bimaster diameter is that it is incompressible so now we will move on to the anterior posterior diameters of the fetal skull anterior posterior diameters firstly we will begin with the something called as the sub occipito bregmatic diameter sub occipito bregmatic diameter so this will this diameter will happen when there is complete flexion of the fetal skull uh, well, when the fetal skull is situated like this and it is completely flexed we, we get a diameter called as sub bragmatic this is from the occipital point all the way up to the anterior fontanelle that is the bragma so that diameter is called as the it will be like this and that diameter is called as the sub bragmatic diameter and it measures up to the 9.5 centimeters and this happens when, when there is a vertex presentation the next diameter we have is the sub occipital frontal diameters sub occipital frontal diameter and this diameter when there is a little bit deflection from the original flexion from sub occipital all the way up to not pregma little bit front frontal so sub occipital frontal and this measures up to 10 centimeters so when does it happen it happens when there is incomplete flexion and we have the same presentation that is a vertex presentation the next we have is the occipital frontal so little bit flexion and little bit deflection again so what do we have from the occipital all the way up to the frontal straight so it measures up to the 11.5 centimeters and as i told you there is a marked deflection and it has the same vertex presentation as well moving on to the mento vertical 
diameter. So mento vertical diameter happens when there is partial extension. Now it is fully depleted. Now if there is partial extension, and this happens when there is bro presentation. So I will show you the diagram. It is that it is mento vertical, right? D. So look at it. D. This is the longest diameter. It measures up to. 14 cm so when there is marked deflection we have all the way from this point to the mentum mento vertical so this measures up to the 14 cm and this is the longest anterior posterior diameter of the fetal skull and when does it happen it happens when there is a pro presentation the next diameter is called as the submento vertical diameter and baby is going from the complete flexion into deflection into complete extension slowly it is going okay the next uh, diameter is called as a submento vertical and this measures up to 11.5 cm and when does it happen when there is incomplete extension and the face presentation is present as well the final diameter is called as the submento pragmatic diameter what is the submento pragmatic diameter you can see f here is the f submento pragmatic flat like this submento pragmatic and it measures up to 9.5 cm and when does it happen when there is complete extension of the fetal skull with face presentation as well so this is the diagram you can see this is the bregma this is the occipital point and this is the mentum so this is the first one that we have that's the sub occipito bregmatic then followed by we have the sub occipito uh, frontal then we have the occipito frontal then we have the mento vertical and finally we have the sub mento bregmatic and these are the important landmarks of the fetal skull so thank you guys thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also share it to other friends and people who want to learn more about the medicine part thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video bye